It was reported that the Turkish police were slow to help the victims and seemed more interested in making arrests. The police then bundled Chris into a police car off to hospital, but it was too late. He was pronounced dead shortly after arrival. Kevin Spate was also stabbed. Ambulances couldn't get to him, so the police put him into a taxi. He later died in the operating theater. Several other Brits were stabbed, and many spoke of being hunted down by packs of Galatasaray fans. The Turkish police were blamed for not using force to prevent the incident getting out of hand. They were also criticized for not cooperating with the British police spotters who were there. It was said that the Turkish police were more worried about receiving negative media coverage than policing the fans. These horrific events left two Leeds fans dead and five others seriously injured. Despite this, the planned match still went ahead amid high tension and maximum security. Leeds accused the Turks of showing a lack of respect. There was no official one minute silence for the victims. The Leeds supporters and players held their own. However, a brief message of condolence was read out by Galatasaray, condemning acts of violence and offering their sympathies. Leeds fans boarded waiting coaches as soon as the match was over, and both sets of supporters taunted each other. Some Leeds fans defaced banknotes with the founding father of Turkey on them. This is a highly offensive and illegal act in Turkey. Their coach was driven through streets lined with Galatasaray supporters. And there were ugly scenes at the airport as they boarded their flight home. The bodies of the two fans who were killed were flown back days later. It must have been an absolutely terrifying experience on that night. Turkey is a very nationalistic country where the culture is based on pride and honor. If you insult people, they reply tenfold. While some Turks thought the provocation was no excuse for the killing of the Leeds fans, many of the public thought they got what they deserved. It's really disappointing for me to say that when those stabbings happened, uh, all the Leeds players, not everyone was filled with sorrow and disappointment. Uh, I've, I remember headlines as if to say, you know, you deserved it. These events happened while Turkey was pushing for entry into the EU. But people questioned whether this Muslim country could ever become part of Europe. In the UK, some thought that this event and reaction showed that Turkey put more value on their customs than human life. Ali Umit Demir was convicted for killing both Leeds fans. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison. His conviction was quashed on appeal. However, new evidence has come to light and a retrial has been ordered, which is currently ongoing with a hearing scheduled for May 2007. In the UK, there was a huge anti-Turkey campaign and the media called for Galatasaray fans and their team to be banned from European football. But Galatasaray were allowed to continue in the competition and beat Arsenal in the final. There were more riots and four fans were stabbed. A sense of injustice has been paralleled with a sense of hate. 
and the feud between English and Turkish fans was further inflamed. Now tomorrow, I'll be walking into this feud when I come face to face with the Galatasaray firm. The early call to prayer in Turkey means you don't need an alarm clock to get you up in the morning. Welcome back to my journey into the world of Turkish football hooligans. It's the morning of the derby, the clash between Fenerbahce and Galatasaray. But before I go to the game, I'm going to meet the notorious Galatasaray firm. They're infamous for making their stadium like hell for opposing teams. Now I've got to go to their manor to see if they'll talk to me. I'm a bit wary of this one because of the hatred between Galatasaray and English fans, especially after the stabbing of the lead supporters. Turkish fans don't pay homage to UK hooligans, and I'm not sure they know me from the football factory. I'm now outside Galatasaray Stadium. Here they are. They're all wrapped around me. I feel a bit digy, a bit nervous. I'm meeting a fella called Al Paslan. He's probably the top boy at Galatasaray. Um, uh, he's, I've been told I've got to wait somewhere. He's going to come and meet me, which isn't usually how we do this. I'm an outlaw. I'm an outlaw. Quick on the draw. Something you've never seen before. And I tell a motherfucker they come in my face. I got something wrong. I got something wrong. Welcome. How are you, brother? Pleasure. Thank you. Looks like a bit of a lump, this geezer, I must say. More of the boys started to arrive, and things were getting lively. <laughs> then they said they wanted to take me around the back streets to where more of the firm were waiting. I asked Al Pazlan if he thought it would kick off at the match today. Ama buna engel olmaya çalışanlar olursa da elbette ki biz orada daha güçlü olacağımızı düşünüyorum çünkü buradan giden 2500 kişi tam bir asker. Galatasaray only got about 2000 tickets for today's match, but people have come miles to be at this crucial game. Çeşitli şehir şehirlerden gelen arkadaşlarımız var. İngiltere'den gelen arkadaşlarımız var. Gördüğünüz işte biraz önce. The Altrazlan brand has become so successful. They've sold more tops than the club has sold team shirts. Şimdi orada biraz bir farklılık oldu. Biz Ultraslan'ı zaten marka olsun diye kurmadık ama Büyük Galatasaray taraftarının teveccühüyle Ultraslan bir marka oldu. The football club are 150 million in debt. In 2003, Galatasaray fans donated 3 million pounds to the club and they gave them the Ultraslan trademark. By doing this, the hooligans saved the club from bankruptcy. Ultraslan ürünleri satıldı ve milyonlarca dolar para kazandı kulübümüz. It was nearing the end of the interview, so I felt I should ask Al Paslan what had triggered the Leeds incident. Ama nedense bu Leedsliler buraya geldiğinde bir terbiyesizlik yaptılar. Bayrağımıza hakaret ettiler.